I'll tell you what, airport food is always the worst. It's like chicken curry, chicken curry pie. We got in the car, as we got in the car, he was trying to say to us, you cancel, you cancel, you cancel. He had a lot of energy and he kept saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. This appears to be like a mall. Is it a mall when you come out of baggage claim? I was really hoping this would get better with a couple bites, but it's not. I'm gonna take like one more bite and throw it out. Today is a travel day. We're leaving Bangkok, going to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Finally, let's get to the airport. Alright, well we made it to the airport. It was quite the adventure coming here actually. Oh, an announcement, hold on. So yeah, it was a little bit of an adventure coming here. We actually ordered a grab car from Bangkok where we were staying in the Ekamai region to the international airport of, I don't know how you pronounce it, Dong Myang or something like that. Not the main one that everyone goes to, but the other international one. And so we ordered a grab car the grab car took 30 minutes to get to where we were, which is kind of weird because we're very close to the BTS. I think the driver was doing something because he was one street away for 30 minutes. But we got in the car. As we got in the car, he was trying to say to us, you cancel, you cancel, you cancel. And I think what he wanted was us to cancel the grab app um, order, right? so that way we can pay him cash. So that way he didn't have to pay taxes on it and something like that. But the problem is if we canceled, then we would lose. Well, we wouldn't lose anything. The problem is if we canceled, it would look bad on our account and it could, uh, yeah, you know, ban us from the application. So that's not good. So basically I said to him, no, 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 we use the app, we use the app. And then he said, we take tolls, we take tolls, toll roads. And I said, or we said, Sure, why not take the toll roads? And the toll roads were very fast because we got to this airport in about 30 minutes. But the tolls ended up being a total of uh, 195 Thai baht plus the 497 baht it was just to get here. So the total came to about 700 baht. Kind of crazy, a little bit more expensive than I thought it would be, but he did take the toll roads and make it faster. And uh, the driver himself, he was an interesting man. He had a lot of energy and he kept saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. Bye-bye, Bangkok. And uh, yeah, a, a, just a strange character. So yeah, we're gonna sit down at the little chicken joint here called Pop Corner. They're all over Bangkok. And uh, we're gonna get a quick bite to eat before we head into the check-in area and check in and get into the gate because we don't know if there's gonna be food over there. See this food right here? These are french fries and boneless chicken. This is the jumbo size, 166 baht. Wow, I thought it was gonna be bigger. They get you with the size jumbo. So we're at the potato corner. They have these in the malls in Bangkok, I've seen them. And it's really interesting because they have a combo deal going on on the menu. For 166 baht, you get a jumbo chicken with a jumbo fry. There's more fries than there are chicken, but the thing that's interesting about it is jumbo is only the, the second smallest size. So it starts at large, then it goes to jumbo, then it goes to mega, giga, and terra. So you read jumbo thinking, oh wow, it's gonna be pretty big. And then, and then you get this. I mean, look how tiny it is. It's definitely for like a 14 year old child. I mean, there's literally like, Five pieces of chicken in there? Hmm. They got us. But let's see how it tastes. This is barbecue popcorn chicken. Pretty good though. Lots of seasoning, wow. So much barbecue powder, that's what they use. They don't put barbecue sauce. It is really interesting because in the US, if you order barbecue chicken or hot chicken or something, it's usually the breading, like how this is, but with a sauce all over it. 
This is just powder on it. It's interesting, it's different, and it's something neat. And then also with it, we have the fries. These are sour cream fries. Let's see how good these are. Literally tastes like fries mixed with sour cream potato chips. Kind of weird. Should've went to McDonald's. Um, all right guys, we're officially through the checkpoints, the immigration here in uh, the airport. Don Moang Airport, however you say that. But uh, now the fun waits, the two and a half hour wait until the flight takes off to head to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, ready to go, ready for a new experience. So let's see what we get into in the next two and a half hours. Just over here at the gate, finally made it. Have a lot of time to just chill out. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with this airport. There is a nice viewing area to see the runway strip. You can see a lot of the takeoffs and landings. And right now, it's golden hour, the sun is setting. So it's quite beautiful and uh, not a bad place to be. I did just pick up a Coke Zero and uh, 45 baht for a Coke Zero. All right, no more announcements, please. <sighs> One thing I'll never understand is why food, beverages, anything that you purchase at the airport is so expensive. It's in the city, it's in the destination where you are. Why is it always so expensive? Because there's no tax on it or something? I don't know, 45 baht, it's not a bad deal. It's you know, a little more than a dollar or so, but you can get it for one, uh, two thirds of the price in the city. So it always boggles my mind that prices are so high in the airport. They're also going crazy with the announcements right now because there's some flights leaving and actually there's a lot of flights going out of here to Malaysia, China, Indonesia and I think many people are shopping so they're kind of late and forgetting about their departure time so they're calling people's name and people are running to the gate. So as you guys can see right here, this is the Air Asia flight or Air Asia plane. It has a Malaysian sticker on it, so maybe this one operates out of Malaysia. I believe that's the flight I'm going to be getting on here. I've only been on Air Asia one time. Wait, I lied. I've been on Air Asia two times, and it was in the Philippines. Once from Manila to Palawan and Palawan to Manila. Uh, five years ago in 2018, so I'm excited to get back on Air Asia, see how it is because it's a pretty cool airline. I like the colors, I like the design, it's pretty simple, but um, it is a, a very, very important airline here in Southeast Asia. Now that it's getting later in the evening, this airport's getting pretty busy. There's more traffic happening outside, more traffic happening inside. I was just looking at the board of departure flights. There's a lot of flights going all over the place. Many to China, like I was saying earlier, and I'm quite shocked. I didn't think there would be that many people uh, traveling here already from there, but there are. And that's a good thing because they're like the last ones to travel finally. So it's good that the people are getting out, they're getting their vacations in, and uh, they're not landlocked there. As you guys can probably see, it got dark very quickly now. And uh, yeah, you can't really see outside too well because the lights are reflecting off the glass, so the glass just looks black. You have to go up to the window and go in order to see. But I did just pick up some food here. Got 200 baht worth of food because that's how much you have to buy in order to use a card in this airport in most of the places. Probably not the case with like the fast food places like McDonald's or Subway or Burger King or something like that, but at least the local places. I'll tell you what, airport food is always the worst. I did just pick up this ham and cheese croissant for 120 baht. Feels pretty hard. Uh, it feels like it's been sitting for a long time. The croissant is not that flaky, soft uh, texture or consistency that usually it's supposed to be. But yeah, 
ham, cheese, and looks like some mayo on here. Something to eat. Let's try it out. Mm. It's got a weird taste and a weird smell to it. That's probably because it's got a. That's probably because it was sitting with the other pastries, the chicken pot pies, the sandwiches, the chocolate stuff. So it's a mixture of just flavors sitting around it. The other thing I got is a chicken pie. I'm sure it was warm at one time, but it's cold and it's pretty hard, but it's pretty heavy. So let's see how this tastes. You can probably see it there. No idea what kind of chicken this is. Ground up chicken. Oh wow. It's like chicken curry, chicken curry pie. Pretty good. This chicken pie here was 120 baht also. Wait, 120 baht? No, I'm sorry. This here was 60 baht. It's one of the other cheap items there, but pretty good. claimed baggage and we're on our way to transportation to try to find a way into the city but as we walk away from the, the baggage claim area this appears to be like a mall is it a mall when you come out of baggage claim or is this the airport I'm kind of confused it looks like a mall but I believe it's an airport very nice lots of restaurants in here and uh, very clean I like it different than all the airports I've ever been in. Yeah, so as I was saying, this airport's pretty nice, actually. We just came down to the lowest level. It says it's level one. There was maybe four levels here when you come out of the international arrivals. And this is where you can get a grab car to the city. And to where we're going, the grab car is going to be, I think $15 US or something. It's like 60 ringgit, the local money here. And, uh, I tried to take some money out of the ATM, but it wouldn't accept my Visa card for some reason. Which is weird, because Visa is accepted everywhere in Asia, but not here, I guess. So now we're just waiting on our Grab driver, and we'll enjoy a, hopefully, quick journey to the city of Kuala Lumpur. Well, into the center, because we're pretty much there now. And, uh, yeah, can rest up for an adventure tomorrow, and a first day in Kuala Lumpur. You know, one of the other problems with Arriving to an airport very late is sometimes you don't have any food to eat because the airport is very closed or it is closed and you arrive into a city late and uh, everything's closed in the city. Here, luckily, there's many places open and it's 12.30 in the nighttime, a little past midnight. So I got this chicken cheese sandwich, it's cold. Don't know how good it is, but I'm about to find out. something you eat when you're starving, that's for sure. <laughs> Not something you would eat on a daily basis. The bread is like a sponge. Oh, I think this is old chicken meat. While we wait for our grab driver, 
check this out. This is the area where we're waiting, and they have this store here called KK. It looks like a Malaysian 7-Eleven. There is 7-Eleven here, but it looks like their own version. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just how I'm perceiving it right now. And you can rent cars here. There's rental stations here. Hertz is worldwide. So is Avis. And uh, they're not open right now, but maybe earlier in the night you could have. I was really hoping this would get better with a couple bites, but it's not. I'm gonna take like one more bite and throw it out. Finally have made it to the Airbnb and it is two o'clock in the morning. Better late than never, but this place looks pretty cool and uh, the first impressions coming in were really nice. It was actually raining on and off and uh, the views were pretty stunning with the city lighting up in the background. And surprisingly, there was some cars on the road. It is Saturday night, but the city looks amazing so far just from seeing it in the darkness for 45 minutes or so, but now I need to get some sleep, get ready for the day tomorrow. So I'm gonna catch you guys in tomorrow's video. So peace.